and welcome back to Young and Excellent. I may be sick, but we're back at it with a fantastic episode with our fan favorite, Loan Chan, where we talk about city council elections, maybe some upcoming elections, getting involved in your community, and trusting yourself with brand new opportunities. So have a listen, have a watch, and enjoy yourself. And thank you to the Star New Journal for publishing us, uplifting us, empowering us to share these local stories and share and amplify voices across the board and across Lambton County. Thank you so much. And make sure to subscribe to their email blasts. They're incredible. You get them daily and they definitely keep me in the know. So subscribe. All right, enjoy everybody. Welcome to the show, Loann. It's such a treat to have you here. Well, thank you for having yeah, me. Of course, how was your day? It was it's fine. Generally yeah. good. Yeah. Generally good. Hey, Generally that's good. good. Generally good is a great <laughs> thing. Obviously, I am sick, so I'm wearing a mask to not get you sick. <laughs> well, and to protect yourself. <laughs> and to protect myself, yes, because I'm a mood of compromise, which a lot of people don't know about. So I definitely get sick all the time. <laughs> but hey, we're here and it's gonna be a great show. Yeah, it's so, working out. Uh, let's just get into it. What do you okay. do for a living? What do I do for a living? Okay, so there are many things that I do. Mm-hmm. My main thing is I'm at home with a bunch of kids. Oh, nice. That's like the hardest job. Stay home mom. <laughs> yeah, because it's full-time work. Yeah. Unpaid. Yeah. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I also run my own business online. It's called Jack. Mm-hmm. So it means to eat in the Hokkien language, which is one of the Chinese dialects. Oh, nice. Um, so basically right now I'm selling kimchi and hot sauce online. Oh, okay. Uh, every once in a while, we get like a little catering order, um, do some public education at the libraries and whatnot, just oh, to like talk cool. about different cultures and the foods that they eat and the history behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just like really passionate about food then. I love food. Why are you, why are you so passionate about food? Because everyone has a different reason. I just really like to eat food. <laughs> And then because of that, I started making different foods. Like I would just look up recipes and then try them and I'd be like, this is it. And then, so I'm not, I'm not good at like naming what is in the food. Mm -hmm. When someone's like, ooh, there's like, I don't know, like a hint of nutmeg. I'll be like, I don't know. (laughs) I'm not sure. Like cinnamon? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you if something's missing, but I won't tell you what that is either. Yeah, yeah, but you just like. I'll be like, something's off. I just. I don't know what it is, but something. That's a good, though. That just seems like you trust your intuition when you cook and when you provide those. Yeah, the best part is, like, you get to flavor the way you taste. And so working with recipes is, like, a nice base to, like, work off of it. But then when I've actually kind of, like, embraced it into something that I make regularly, I'm like, don't ask me the recipe. I don't know. (laughs) It's all by feel. You just keep going till it smells right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that makes every creation that you do so unique. Mm-hmm. That's really, really cool. So how did you get started in that? Um, honestly, I think it was just an idea at first. Um, so there was this, there's a social networking program that was offered through Pillar Network in London. Oh, cool. Um, and they were looking for women-owned businesses mm-hmm. or ideas for businesses. And at the time when I was applying, on, we had talked about like potentially doing a business in the future when the kids are in school. Yeah, yeah. All that that's in, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? I'll just apply with this grand idea I have that I have no idea how to make happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and the worst that can happen is someone says no, right? And I don't yeah. get into the program. Yeah, 100%. So I applied with this idea where I wanted to use food food as like a medium to start conversations about culture and race and how people experience life differently Mm -hmm. because there's so much happening in the world and you're always like oh how do I start this conversation it's so awkward and I don't know are you going to be offended if I talk about it am I going to say it wrong all those things and so and in the end we don't talk about it right Mm -hmm. but then I was thinking we're always like, oh, let's go catch up over coffee or like, let's go eat and have a meal together. And during those times, you actually start talking beyond yeah. the surface. Yeah. And so using that idea is like, well, if I'm trying to talk more about like how people experience life differently based on the experiences that they have, the way they've been raised, like what mm-hmm. they know versus what you know, it's like, we're not trying to be like, this is what's different about mm-hmm. us. Like over food, we get to talk about what we know in common Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it's like, oh, maybe we do have different ways of interpreting that. But in the end, like the core value or or the experience is pretty similar to be like, oh, yeah, like we do share that in common. Yeah. And so using food as the way to break down those barriers, because you're like, you just feel more open to being vulnerable in the moment. Yeah. Um, and so that was the idea that I had like gone into this interview that with. Beautiful. And I was like, and I have no idea how to make this business, <laughs> but that's the idea. Um, <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, we love the idea. We'll figure out a way to make this work. Oh right. Gosh, I so, love that. yeah. That sounds like a real leap of faith because, one, I love the testament that you just spoke about, about how you can experience other people's culture through your palate and, mm -hmm. and through that that kind of process of taking that in you kind of become vulnerable in that moment I think that's yeah. beautiful and it's so true I've experienced it myself I have lots of friends from very different cultures and they're very different backgrounds and I always find I can connect with them so well when I sit down with them over like food from their culture mm -hmm. or my culture and then you can find something similar yeah. it's like oh like you might call it pierogies but mm -hmm. they are calling it gyoza yeah. or they're calling it this other thing but you're like it's essentially just a bunch of stuff wrapped up in dough. Yeah, and how cool <laughs> is that across the world that that's like a very, like there's so many mm -hmm. common things that kind of go on in each culture and food happens to be one of the most common ones. Yeah. But that sounds like a total leap of faith, like I said, about joining the Pillar nonprofit without really fully understanding what you're, oh, you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Is that kind of how you tackle <laughs> life? Like you're just like, I'm just going to do this. The worst thing I'll get is a no, like you said. Yep. And go with it. Yeah, so that's definitely been like a learning curve over mm -hmm. many years because at first I'd be like, oh no, I can't even try because it's not even going to, no one's going to understand what it is. Yeah. Like I usually talked myself out of things before even presenting it to someone else or being like, oh no, there's no way, yeah. like it's not going to happen. That's so hard not to do that. Though. Yeah, it yeah. is really hard. Yeah. And so there's a lot of like intentional thought to be like, you know what, I could say no, but I don't know if they'll say no. Like I could mm -hmm. say it and they might actually be like, oh yeah, that's good. Like we could work on it. Like it's not great, but it's an idea and yeah. we can work on that and we can build on it. And like, if they say no, then no. But if I say no, then obviously they say no. It's like yeah, that whole, yeah. what is it like? You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yes, Michael Scott. <laughs> My, no, Wayne Gretzky, kidding. Michael Wayne Scott. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's but yeah. so, so true. I like to live life that way too. So when you were talking, I really related to that because I'll just start joining things, and sometimes my plate gets too full, and then I have to like let go of certain things. Yes, but I think it's <laughs> such a fantastic mindset to have in life, just to be like you know what, I feel it in my gut that I want to do this. I'm going to let the universe almost decide in a way that it's going to be a yes or a no. And if it's a no, that means it's not meant for me. If it's a yes, <laughs> then I'm going to do it and I'm going to kill it. Yeah, and I yeah. think it's a great like way of thinking about things because it's like, what if there's something that I really am interested in, but I don't know if I have the skills to do it? Yeah. Am I going to keep trying to prepare myself to get those skills in order to be super ready before someone will accept me to be mm -hmm. able to do it? or do I just try for it? And maybe they'll let me in, be like, I see some potential. We can still work on like the fine details, whatnot, and like learn through experience, right? Yeah, like exactly. most of the time, that's how it works in life. It's like, we don't come fully equipped yeah. to do everything. We just, life happens and mm -hmm. then you figure stuff out. Yeah. And I think I had to try to apply that to like every part of my life. Like, like can I join a board? I'm not a professional. Yeah. Why would anyone be like oh yeah she should do that <laughs> right like like i, I, I just put it all that, out there i get what you're saying right like it, <laughs> yeah. it's taken a long time to like build it up to be like you're just gonna put yourself out there and people will see what they see yeah absolutely <laughs> i again i love that and i think that's so 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 important so for you is that kind of how because i know you ran for council so mm -hmm. for sarnia is that kind of what your process was with that like learning through experience even in yeah that for sure so yeah. for that one um, I went into the the campaign basically like I already know there's a lot of obstacles in my way mm -hmm. like I'm young I'm female yeah. I'm a person of color mm -hmm. I don't have a profession mm -hmm. um yeah, so right yeah, like all like the so things actually. that you're like oh you should be this qualified before mm -hmm. you do stuff and I was like well I already have that there so instead of saying that's all the reasons why I can't get in I'm just gonna embrace that be like yeah I realize that's me yeah. but that's also a lot of people 
right? Yes, and 100%. we're trying to make sure that like council is representative of the people. Mm -hmm. So because I'm not all those things, those would be the people yeah. that I would represent if people voted me in. And so that was the mindset going into the campaign and basically was like, I just want to be there for people who don't think they could be in politics. Cause yeah. it's not like I wanted to ever, like it wasn't like a dream that I've had since <laughs> yeah. I was a child, yeah, I but I'm like, and I don't think that's a dream for a lot of people either, <laughs> which is why I yeah. was like, I think that's why I should just do it yeah. because I'm willing to do it. And like someone has to do it. Mm. And the fact that I keep talking about it, I might as well just put my name in there why and not? see what happens. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's like also a testament to the, the whole idea that like you're never really ready. Yes. I, I, I liked what you said before uh, you went into the council stuff up about like, were you ready? Did you feel ready? And I don't think you ever do feel ready. Yeah. When you're taking on a new opportunity. I just don't think that's the case. But you can learn from experience, which for I think sure. is such a great thing that you can do for yourself. So what did you learn from running for city council? That there's a lot of people who have similar values and ideas that just want to make good things happen for the community, mm -hmm. but don't really know how to get connected to other people to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And through that, we were able to make a lot of relationships and a lot of connections. And even now, I'm still in contact with a lot of people where I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I think now that I know like Chrissy or like I now I know Brian, it's like they're on council, yeah. they've made it. And so if you contact them for this specific thing, mm -hmm. then like either they can direct you to someone else who has like the specific know-how to get mm -hmm. that to happen yeah. or like write a letter and they can then bring it to the council mm -hmm. and then from there present it and do whatever, however things work, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's been a really big learning curve for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, because I remember even during the campaign, people were like, I have never voted in my life because I don't know why I'm voting and like, That's really who fair. am I voting for? Like, what are they even going to do? Yeah. And so from that, I learned in like, grade 10 civics class didn't really help any of us. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember grade 10 civics because you had to pretend like you were a parliament party and then run against each other. I had to do that. It was a blast and a half. I I'm guess. like, I barely remember. I'm like, I remember there's three levels of yeah. government. The end. <laughs> yeah, honestly, but I also feel like voting is really inaccessible for a lot of folk because I don't think the information is really out there of what your vote actually stands for, mm -hmm. where it goes, how does it impact your community? Because a lot of folks just think that they're voting for like Justin Trudeau. And it's yeah, like, well, and no, it's like, like that's not how it works here in Canada. Works. You gotta vote for <laughs> your local people, and like that's how you you build. Mm -hmm. And effect. another hard thing is like who's actually in charge of what, right? Yeah. Like. You're like, you have a complaint about this one thing, but it's actually not city that does it. It's the province that yeah, does it, exactly. but not if it's this specific issue, mm -hmm. because then it's the federal government. And you're exactly. like, but how do I know? And then like oh, I'm trying to read through <laughs> any website that oh. you know the government or like even yep. our provincial government puts out is, is so inaccessible. It's just not a yeah. good time at all. All the legalese is there to yeah. protect them. Which and then fair. you as the citizen is like, just want this thing. Please, yeah. Yeah. anyone. <laughs> anyone, just help me out. Yeah. I wish they had like a Google Translate. Like, you know, like put it into layman's terms for me, mm -hmm. this whole paragraph, and then I'll get the gist of it. Yeah, but that would help. But for you me. to learn that like a lot of people don't know, like that's really interesting to me because I find in Sarnia, the culture is very disconnected from what our city council does. I think it's getting more integrated because of people like Chrissy and Adam and Brian, which is incredible. But for you to like, bring that into yourself is that like a marketing thing that can happen through like elections like to maybe spread the word about how to vote and where your vote yes goes? was that like a big part of your campaign was just like the marketing part of it um so in the beginning like we there was a bunch of us that actually ended up kind of working together because mm -hmm. we were all like we all kind of are running on the same platform yeah. and so at that point we were like we don't actually care if you vote for us in particular we mm -hmm. just want you to vote for someone in this group, yeah. because we are all supportive of each other, just like how council should be, yeah, which is where we're working together. We might have different views, but like the point is we want to do this better mm -hmm. for the community. And so I think it was like a group of 10 of us. We were like, vote for any of us because mm -hmm. we're all going to do the same thing anyway. Yeah. So that was really nice That's to see. And thing. so, yeah, like 
I know a lot of people afterwards were like, oh, I'm so sorry you didn't make it. I'm like, oh my goodness. I am thrilled with how I ended up. Like yeah. it was my first time running, doing anything huge. I was just hoping to get like a thousand votes mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. And then I ended up being like seventh mm -hmm. in just the city part and out of like 28 people. And I'm like, that was yeah. way more than I, I expected. I thought your campaign was So great. I was like, I consider that a win. <laughs> yeah, that is a huge win. Would you do it again? Yeah, so I'm actually the federal candidate for the NDP. Oh, which is so exciting. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, so. The federal candidate. Yes, so oh. whenever that election gets called, which is any time now until October 2025, wow. um, so we're just like on call, yeah. waiting to see when that happens. So whenever that happens, I will be the one on all the orange signs. Oh my God, I can't <laughs> wait for you. Honestly, I'm, I'm so stoked for you. Yeah, That's it's exciting. Such a huge endeavor. How did that come about for you? Um, I was actually just talking to someone who works for the NDP during my municipal campaign mm -hmm. um, just to be like, how does a campaign work? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Right? So you are in politics. You should have some ideas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so it's yeah. just through that conversation and keeping up with her and like working with everyone else that I talked to during the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, like this past summer, they reached out again and they were like, we were serious when we talked to you about like, if you didn't make it into council that mm -hmm. you should consider either provincial or federal. And since the federal one is the next one to come up, mm -hmm. we would like you to consider actually putting your name in to be the candidate. Oh, and you're a perfect candidate too. Oh, thank like, you. <laughs> absolutely perfect. I've been a fan of yours since your city because I knew of you before we knew each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I think through the Gene Collective is yes. kind of like where I kind of first got introduced to you. And I just was like, man, this person's going to get in. Like I legitimately was like, this is the <laughs> best person to represent the people here. And now to know that that could be done federally from, from you is just that's nuts to me because I think, again, you're the perfect candidate. Well, thank you. But, like, have, did you, this was something that you always wanted to do or is this like because of the council, because of the opportunity, or is this something you've always been like a dream? <laughs> it was definitely never like a long time life goal dream. Yeah. Um, it was really more of the same reason why I decided to run municipally was I'm already doing this work through boards mm -hmm. and through my volunteering. Yes, um, and I'm like, it's not like I'm going to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. But being able to do it on like a larger scale or at a higher level, whatever you want to call it, whether it was in council or now, I guess, in the House of Commons, yeah, yeah. Um, it would just be able to have like a larger voice for all the people that I was trying to advocate mm -hmm. for anyway in yeah. my volunteer work. So I guess in my mind, it was like, this is the same thing I'm doing, but just louder. Yeah, <laughs> just, just fantastic. And again, that whole mindset of, like, I'm going to just jump in and I know that I've got myself and I'll learn as I go and experience it. Yeah. But obviously you already had an experience with the campaign and now you're going back into it. Like, what's the whole process now moving forward for you in terms of your campaign? So we're not in campaign mode. Yes. We're in yes. pre-campaign yes. mode. Yes. Yes. Pre just to clarify yes. that I am no not campaign. campaigning right now. No. <laughs> this is just a conversation. <laughs> So what I'd really like to do in the next year, as long as it's a year till the yeah. election, is to be able to just get out there in the community, like, because our riding is quite large. Like, mm -hmm. currently, um, Sarnia Lambton is the riding, and it's, so it goes from Point Edward to about um, somewhere just above Chatham right now. Oh, wow. okay. Um And then after April 1st, it's going to become Sarnia lambton Bukajanong which means it's going to change mm -hmm. and be larger. So it'll still be from Point Edward down to Walpole Island. Wow. Um, so that's the north-south. That's a long, long yeah. way, yeah. And then we're going all the way west, I believe, to like Lambton Shores. So all of Lambton County will now be in the same riding nice. after April 1st, because currently Lambton County is split yeah. kind of like three quarters I'm really quarter by that i think that would be a really interesting change yeah i think it'll help because so many of our things like municipally are being lambton county yeah. so now if we can do that federally as well it'll just make more sense than splitting it yeah. between two writings yeah, absolutely yeah makes, so the plan yeah, yeah. right now is just to kind of like get into all the different communities mm -hmm. let people know that like i am here yeah. i will be the one running um and i just want to know like what does each community want mm -hmm. and like what what is the voice that wants to be heard right yeah, um absolutely. and kind of just being like what's the next community event or like mm -hmm. where where are the people who want to be involved or like mm -hmm. my main thing right now is really where are the youths, yeah, where are the youths <laughs> because man? 
Like just the same way that I was like, I have no idea what it was like going into it. And that people were like, I don't know how to vote. Like mm -hmm. that's another thing I really want to kind of reach is absolutely. like, what does it mean, mm -hmm. right? Like, who are you voting for? Why are you voting? What does that mean? And I kind of want to do these kind of like public education things before a campaign thing mm -hmm. starts because I don't want it to be like, you should vote for me because I'm awesome. Yeah. It's like, I want you to vote for whoever you think will actually represent your views, yeah. whether that's me or someone else. Like, I just want you to understand what you're doing. Yeah, and you presented that mindset in the city council mm -hmm. election too, which is just, I think that's a phenomenal thing to go into something of this magnitude. Like that mindset is perfect for it because if you feel like you're a good candidate, but someone else is a good candidate, then you're also uplifting voices, not trying to tear down voices. Yeah, and it's like maybe people might not think I'm the one that represents them best, mm, but like yeah. you do what you think will represent you the best, but I just want you to make sure you understand yeah. why you're making that decision. Absolutely. I love that. So for you in terms of taking on this role and obviously you're in your pre-campaign mode, what would you want to see in this community? What, what, would, what do you really want to bring to the community? Or can you not talk about that yet? What do you mean? <laughs> like, like for your, like, you know, if you were to take leadership of this sector, like, what would you want to bring and what would you want to see in our community and also from Lampton Shores all the way down to Point Edward? Yeah, so, like, if I did end up yeah. being voted in as the MP for our area, it's really more of what does everyone want me to bring into mm -hmm. Ottawa and, like, oh, what does nice. Ottawa need to hear about what Sarnia Lambton because Renong needs, yeah. right? Um, because, again, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. I'm just the voice for what Sarnia Lambton yeah, needs, right? The advocate. Mm -hmm. I like that. So you're going into this with this huge advocacy kind of feeling. And I, I think that's really, really impressive because I don't think a lot of people who step into politics really take that in. I feel like a lot of people want to like almost jump 10 steps ahead and already being the voice for the community as opposed to what you're doing, the groundwork of getting to know people, educating, making sure that everyone knows what the process is. Like yeah. you're starting from scratch which is so important to do in a, in a case like this. For sure, because yeah. especially it's like, if even if I think I know what Sarnia Lampton needs, mm -hmm. that's not going to ring true for everyone, right? Yeah, true. So I can't be like, oh, I think we should do all these things mm -hmm. because those are my ideas. Yeah. It's, I need to know what everyone needs, right? And then from there, we can talk about that, bring that up, let yeah. people know that this is what Sarnia Lampton wants, Absolutely. right? And so I think that was like one of the reasons why I thought the NDP was one of the ones that aligned the best with mm -hmm. what my values Absolutely. already are. Yeah, they align with me too. Right? So I get it. <laughs> it's like the fact that most recently there's like the dental care plan. So it's like so that literally everyone can mm -hmm. access basic dental care. Yeah. It's because a huge like one. unless you have your own private insurance, there's a lot of people who are like, I can't. Like I gotta yeah. buy groceries. Yeah. Right? And Lambton Family Dental can only do one day a year where they give free services. And that's yeah. not enough for this community. It's not enough for any community. Right. And it's so great it's like initiative though, great. <laughs> I'm so happy you did it. Keep doing it. Yeah, so but. now it's on a federal level. Yeah. You can get dental care. Which is amazing. So it's starting off with like seniors and um, people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And then after the most vulnerable population gets their basic dental care then it'll work out to everyone else yeah but yeah like that's kind of why i was like yeah that makes sense we need it the people need it so Absolutely. why not do it for the people yeah and honestly i haven't done enough research for what's what's coming up obviously because you guys aren't in campaign mode yet. oh not at all so yeah so like i don't really know what everybody's platform is but i feel like ndp always has uh, a general like mass rule almost with their platform where they're like everybody should have access to this mm -hmm. equity is the most important thing we can do to make sure everybody's set up for success and yeah because i feel like especially with covid i feel like we're in survival mode right now i don't think we've ever left survival mode though i think since colonization we've always been in survival yeah, mode. yeah i think it's just become more obvious yeah, now yeah it's just like wow it's staring us right in the face our grocery bills the housing mm -hmm. market everything and so if we can eliminate barriers and obstacles, we absolutely, should be doing that, and we should be working towards that. Yeah, and it's yeah. this this is kind of the mindset where it's like you got to look for I don't want to say weakest link, but basically your most vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. And then as long as they have what it needs, like yeah. the strongest is going to benefit from that too, right? Hundred percent agree. I believe in the whole method that wolves use. I know that's like <laughs> a really weird thing to say, but wolves, the strongest one, the leader, will stay at the back of the pack mm -hmm. to make sure everybody gets to where they need to go. Yeah. It's almost like they just already delegate. And I, I believe in leading from the back of the pack. That's what I always say. It's 
it's about us moving in one direction but if somebody needs a little extra help or guidance or anything I would be there to pick up those pieces. Yeah, you're basically lifting others up so that yeah. you can all get there together. Absolutely, absolutely. Geese do that too sometimes. Yeah, the bee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. I, I'm happy you share that mindset as well. So to just uh, shift it now in a conversation, what is your favorite thing to do in Sarnia? What is my favorite thing to do in Sarnia? Okay, so this is going to be like one of those things that where you're like, I cannot believe you said that. <laughs> I don't like sand. Oh, that's okay. So I understand. it's not the beach. It's, uh, it's <laughs> everywhere. It's like yes, that is that is my thing. Like too? This is sand thing. gets everywhere. Yeah. You find it half a year later, and you're like, how? Yeah. It's winter time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I understand that. So like, don't you do not offend me. Okay, because no <laughs> I'm like most people are like, oh, you moved to Sarnia and you don't like the beach. I'm like, I like yeah. looking at it. <laughs> I just don't like being in it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so fair, because again, even just going swimming, then you have to shower for like days and just like get this, all the sand it's out of everywhere. your hair. It's in the car. Oh, it's in your God. house. Yeah, it's just everywhere. I Can't, have sand all mm. over my car. Because I, I am a beach person, but I feel like Sarnia definitely has this ride or die beach mentality, <laughs> where it's like if you're with us, you're if you're not with us, you're against us kind of thing, which is just so <laughs> interesting to me. I'm like, pools are fine too, guys. Like, it's it's okay. It's <laughs> less <fine>. sand involved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what would be your favorite besides beaches? I think it's honestly going to like the different local businesses because there's so many cool things. And like, I love when there's like a pop up or like first Friday is so much fun. And like the weekend walkabouts, like I love when people come together and you're like, Oh, I just want to like walk around and go from this place to this place to yeah. this place. And then you're like, Oh, all these things are so cute. Like, yeah. oh <laughs> I just God. want all of it. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got some phenomenal artists in the community mm -hmm. too that I always want to buy their artwork or jewelry or like, yes. anything. Oh my gosh. Like, Oh, yeah. Well, no, I like the crocheted watermelon. Yeah. I love it. So that's, from your answer, it makes me believe that you're a very community-driven person. Yeah. I, yeah. I like when, I love when businesses get together and do mm -hmm. things together or when organizations support each other. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, it's my favorite way to find a new thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to say it. But, uh, yeah, so have you always been a community-driven person? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Like, I've everything that I've ever volunteered for since I was in, like, high school was something to do with community even if it wasn't like in the name yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> fair, but you're people person people driven community driven that's really yeah. cool did you grow up in Sarnia no I actually grew up in Mississauga oh uh, wow. then I like moved to London for university and then my husband got a job here and then we moved here mm -hmm. so I like to joke that I just keep moving to smaller and smaller <laughs> cities Honestly, that's <laughs> a bad thing. uh no the traffic the traffic yeah, oh 10 minutes God. is a traffic jam that's amazing oh, like yeah. when we go to Toronto now my kids are like oh is this is a traffic jam I'm like no, this is just a traffic light. This is just there's just it. way more cars in front of us. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because I lived in the GTA and I hated the traffic. I mm -hmm. didn't mind it when I was there. Like when I was there, yeah. I was like, oh, if I'm driving with my friends, like I've got nowhere to go. I'm like 19 years old. I don't care. You have all got, the time in the world. Exactly. I got all the time <laughs> in the world. And then now that I'm working in Sarnia because I moved back during like COVID. Now that I'm here and it's like takes me two seconds to get to work, it mm -hmm. takes me two seconds to get here. I can literally walk if I wanted to, it doesn't even matter. And then now driving to Toronto, I am so mad in traffic. <laughs> like I'm so mad in traffic. It's so yeah. bad because this is why everyone has road rage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, because it's just it's absolutely insane. Some of my friends live in Pickering. And then they have to drive to North York and Vaughn, like, oh, around okay. there. And it takes them, like, two hours. Yeah. And like, it should only take you, like, 30 to 40 minutes. Like, like even if you have access to, like, the GO train. Yeah. I'm, like, at least. Okay, so it's still, like, a two-hour commute or wherever you're coming from, depending yeah. on time of day. But I'm, like, at least you're not driving, right? Yeah, like, you could at least, like, close your eyes or, like, read a book yeah. or, like, listen to a podcast, whatever. But just chill yeah exactly it's like meditative <laughs> almost when you're yeah. in those spaces it's like it's like you're giving yourself time yeah there oh, and like that. you like look at it that way and you're like i have two hours to do my own thing yeah, i used to read i used mm. to read all the time on the subway on the go train everything i just i loved it and now i find i don't have enough time because now i'm just driving 10 minutes so i'll leave my and you're already way. there <laughs> but i do miss reading <laughs> but uh i will not trade that for traffic I will not no not at all um but yeah so last question for our interview what has been the greatest advice you've been given oh man <laughs> the greatest advice um, probably just 
put yourself out there, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think that's been some things come up over and over again in different things. It's never been like a specific, explicit sentence, yeah. but I feel like that's like the message behind things, the right? Yeah, yeah, the gist of it's like, just try, yeah. right? Like, just do it because if you don't do it right, you can try again. Yeah, and failure is not a scary thing. Right, and failure it's like if, if it. you might find out, that's not actually what I want. Yeah, exactly. So... Why not give it a shot? Oh, I love that. Okay, I know I said that was the last question, but now I'm just curious. Would, would that be the advice you'd give to anybody listening or watching here, or would you give different advice if you could? No, 100%. I would say just try it. Mm -hmm. Like, whether you think it's a failure or you don't think it was perfect, like, that's not the point, right? The point is to try it, and then you can learn something from it. Like, it's either that was not what I expected or it went better than expected or I just realized that's not actually what I wanted at all. Yeah. Um, but if you don't try it, it's going to be this like dream that you may or may not ever be ready for. Yeah. And when you finally get it, you're like, nope. Yeah. I've spent all this time looking for this thing mm -hmm. and it wasn't what I wanted. Right. Yeah. And to but, be okay with that. Yeah. yeah. But it's like if you try it now, even when you don't think you're fully ready, yeah. you can you can still learn. You Absolutely. can whether that's learning to be better at it mm -hmm. or to learn that that was not what you wanted. At least you didn't spend like half your life being like, yeah. I've always wanted this and now I have it and I don't want it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Well, thank you so much. And where can we find you? Like oh, on social media oh, or so many places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, I guess you could follow me on Instagram at like loannchan.sarnia, okay. uh, which is also the same thing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So that's basically where I share different community events that I know about. So just so people know, mm -hmm. um, kind of like a online community board. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, so that, that's that. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Well, follow Loanne. <laughs> I right, thank you. <laughs>